Hey, welcome back to another episode of Dig Deeper. This is gonna be part two to our Q&A episodes. There was so much feedback that we got from our first 25 Dig Deepers that we actually had to go back and split all of our questions into multiple videos. So thank you so much for all those comments and those questions. I'm gonna hand it off to the other archeologists here. And again, thank you so much. So we got a question from Merle Morrison that says, they sure didn't lay the graves in even rows, did they? And the answer is not always. I believe um, this specific question is referring to our dead shed excavation where we found two burials. So the dead shed is located on the state house burial ground. And we think that the burials in the state house burial ground were people who didn't have deep roots in this community, such as indentured servants, enslaved peoples, or immigrants. The jumble of burials over by the state house stand in contrast to the burials here in the churchyard, which are very much uh, more orderly than the burials over by our dead shed excavations. The churchyard would have been where higher status individuals would have been buried, as well as family members and people who are part of the community, which is why they were buried in a more orderly fashion. We have found that concentrations of burials and burial grounds tend to be more orderly, but we have found lone burials in random places around the island. Thanks for the great question. So when I'm working down by the seawall and on our YouTube channel as well, we got a lot of questions about work out in the water. Uh, so P. Taylor and Bruce T. both asked about underwater archaeology. Had we ever done it before? That kind of thing. The answer is yes. In uh, 1955, in anticipation for the 350th anniversary of the 1607 fort, uh, there were excavations done. One of the first three excavations to be done was out in the water, uh, trying to look for that fort. Uh, and they didn't find it, obviously, because it was still on land. Uh, but they did find a lot of artifacts. In 1991, there was side scan sonar work done, and then later some more work done out in the water to try and characterize the riverbed. There were some features found, but it was largely inconclusive, and we haven't returned to do any work since. However, uh, we are thinking it would be very cool to go out and do survey work in uh, order to try and find the 1607 shoreline. So that's something we may or may not do in the future. It certainly would be very fascinating. So thank you for the great questions. One of the questions that we got on one of our videos was from P. Taylor, who asked, has anybody contacted the descendants of either of these artists? He's referring to Robert Sully and Benson Lossing, who picked up things on the Jamestown beach to find out if they are still with the family. And I can tell you that Robert Sully's artifacts that he collected here are said to have ended up with the uh, State Historical Society of Wisconsin. And we have been in contact with the collections there. However, they said that they uh, so far have not found any of those relics or artifacts that were picked up here in Jamestown and said to have been given to them. So the other thing you've asked is if we have contacted any of the descendants of these artists and that answer right now is no. However, we will put it on the list as one of the things to look into as our, our archaeologists continue to research the uh, early images of Jamestown Island. Our next question is from Stephen Kay, and they ask, does this mean that they used wood for their kills or were charcoal makers in Jamestown? So the short answer to this is yes for both of those. Um, they are probably using wood in kills, but they are also making charcoal here at Jamestown. Um, they're also making pitch and tar from the swamp, um, and they're making bricks. When the colonists arrived, they were trying to find a way to make money. So they had to find something here that wasn't in England. And that thing was primarily trees. So they were trying to find anything that they could use trees for to send back to England because England didn't have those resources. Wood is being used as fuel for making ceramics. It's also being turned into charcoal, which is then being used as fuel for making iron, and glass. Trees were also valuable for making pitch and tar and potash. 
And finally, trees are being used as building materials here at Jamestown, and they're even being shipped to England for building materials. Thank you for that question. Um, so we got a question from Dallas Taylor 547. And the question was, GIS data, what is that? Well, GIS stands for Geographic Information System. And in practice, what that ends up being is a combination of a digital map and a database. So when we're doing our archaeological excavations, uh, we draw maps in the field, either via hand drawings or, more commonly, uh, with surveying equipment, a, a total station. We take that information and we put it into our geographic information system. We either trace out the hand drawings or we use the points we took with the total station to map in archaeological features on that digital map. From there, we can access the database part of the GIS system and add in information and say, okay, this archaeological feature is a burial, let's say, and we think it dates to 1617. Now, this doesn't sound that impressive, just me talking about it, but in practice, what that allows us to do is to analyze the entire site all at once, or a series of features. I can go into the GIS system, see the archaeological features we found over the past 26 years of excavation, and start filtering out things. Maybe I want to look just at those burials from 1617. Well, since that information is already input there, I can just show those. They'll show up in the exact right spots. And then I can start to think about how they interrelate, what patterns we're seeing across the landscape. You can bring in artifact data. All sorts of things can go into your GIS system. Now, one of the things we also use it for is when we're doing reconstructions, like putting up the barracks here, we can make sure that our new construction is not going to impact the intact archaeological features. So before we even built this, we went through and we checked the maps of our excavation in the GIS system and then used that information to shoot in the locations for the new posts, set up so they would not impact anything that was still intact under our feet. So we use it for a lot of things. We use our GIS system to uh, map and analyze the archaeological data, but also to help with uh, reconstructions and site planning. So thanks for the great question. So hopefully now we've answered some of the questions that all of you have. So from all of us here at Jamestown Rediscovery, thank you so much and keep those comments coming. We're going to do more of these question videos.